Hi, Kristen Atchison here, and we're still talking about foundations. Now we're going to talk about neurons. This is our second video for chapter one. So it's not a psychology class without a discussion about the cells in the nervous system. We have two kinds of main cells in our nervous system. We have the glial cells and the neurons. And we'll talk about both of those. The parts of the neuron um, are as follows. So I feel like it's a rite of passage that you know how to draw a neuron. Um, so if you don't already know how to draw a neuron, um, as a psych student, learn how to draw a neuron as a psych student and be able to label it because we talk about it in every psych class. It's really, really important. Um, so I think almost every psych class starts with this. So if you don't know how to already, you know, just, just learn. Um, so here are the parts of our, of, of neurons. Um, we have the cell body or the soma, um, which is, um, where we contain, um, where the action potential will, will happen. The dendrites, um, which are these little um, tabs that send information into the soma or the cell body. Um, we have the axon, which is the long um, connector um, to either other cells, um, other neurons, or in this case, it's this is for a motor neuron into a muscle that will cause action. Um, but typically, um, in the brain, they're connected to other neurons. So the structure of the neuron, the dendrite, again, receives input from the other neurons. So the information is going into the dendrites. That's the end point for the information. Then we go into the cell body or the soma. That's where we have the nucleus as well. And then the axons will carry the impulses away from the cell body. Those axons can be covered with myelin. Um, which is a fatty insulating substance, which is made up of those glial cells. Um, and again, it covers some axons. And what that really helps with is it increases the speed of information so that those neurons can transmit that, transmit that information down the axon quicker. At the end of the axon, we have terminal buttons, and that releases the neurotransmitter chemicals across the neuron um, into um, another neuron. So across that synapse um, into the dendrites, that's where we're going to have the incoming information. So we have the direction of information going from dendrite to cell body. Um, there we are either fire or we won't. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, if the neuron fires, it'll go down the axon into the terminal buttons, um, and then that information will cross the synapse um, and hopefully into another neuron. Synapses are the spaces between neurons, um, and we'll talk about those, and there's an image with those shortly as well. So communication within the neuron. Um, this is all happening in electrochemical transmission. Um, so when we talked about um, the sensations of the outside world being transmitted into electrochemical transmission, um, this is being done, again, through the sensory receptors into the neurons so that those neurons can communicate with the brain and the rest of the body. A neuron starts out with resting potential. Um, so if you look at this graph, graph here, that's the beginning. Um, there's also a nice graph of this in your book on page 11, figure 1-4, that has this action potential graph. And it starts out with resting potential. Next, what we have is we're going to have depolarization um, of, um, and that's going to change that neuron's charge. Um, we are going to then have repolarization, um, and this is all happening kind of within that peak, um, within that action potential there. If we reach that threshold of excitation, um, we will have um, an action potential. Um, action potentials are all or none. So you either reach that threshold or you don't. Um, if you don't reach that, reach that threshold, the neuron will not fire. So it's an all or none kind of thing. You're not going to get a half fire. Um, either fires all the way or it doesn't. So again, if we reach that threshold of excitation, um, we're going to fire, um, and then there will be um, the hyperpolarization um, and the resting period at the end. Again, this is all happening very, very quickly. Um, this graph we have about three seconds. The graph in your book we have about, I'm sorry, three milliseconds. The graph in your book you have about five milliseconds. And I think that's just because it has more resting um, time period on either side. Um, but again, this is happening very, very quickly.
how, and that's how the neuron communicates within itself, within one cell, within one neuron. The communication between neurons, um, so the presynaptic neuron, the first neuron, is going to release a neurotransmitter. So if it fires, it's going to have that information go down the axon, um, and it's going to release that neurotransmitter into the synapse. The neurotransmitter will cross that synapse, and it's going to stimulate receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, on the second neuron. Um, and then that neuron has to decide, okay, we're going to start that process all over again. The information's come in. Um, do we have an action potential? It's all or none. Are we going to fire? Um, and those firing rates can be different. Um, and they're usually expressed in spikes per second. Um, and there's also um, a baseline firing rate, which is the low rate of spontaneous firing um, at fairly random intervals in the absence of any stimulus. So there's different ways that these neurons can communicate even when information's not necessarily there. There's also different kinds of messages that can, trans that can go between these two neurons. The vast majority of neural signals are initiated by excitatory chemicals. The most common excitatory chemicals are neurotransmitters released from adjacent cells. Chemical excitation of a neuron typically occurs at the dendrites, which contain a high concentration of chemical receptor sites made up of proteins. Excitatory chemicals stimulate a change in electrical potential across the cell membrane. When this happens on a dendrite, a small electrical charge moves along the dendrite membrane to the cell body, along the cell body membrane to the axon, and then down the length of the axon membrane to the axon terminal. The excitatory electrical charge that travels down the axon to the terminal has the potential to stimulate chemical release from that region. If an excitatory chemical is released, the transmission process described here may be repeated on the next neuron. Excitatory chemicals activate a neuron by creating a positively charged electrical impulse on the cell membrane. Inhibitory chemicals, on the other hand, create a negatively charged electrical impulse. When a neuron is not being activated by excitatory input, an inhibitory input has no notable effect. Inhibitory input reduces or blocks the effect of excitatory chemicals released from other cells. When a neuron is being activated by an excitatory input from one axon terminal, inhibitory chemicals from another axon terminal can slow or completely stop the excitation. So here's the structure of a synapse. Um, we talked about how those synapses can have excitatory or inhibitory uh, messages. Um, and so again, this is being crossed, this information is being given across the synapse. So the synapse is again that space um, between the two neurons. It's just a little, little space. And what we have, how this communication is happening is again with those neurotransmitters. We have information going across the synapse um, and the information leaves the axon terminal um, in what's these kind of, they look like little bubbles, um, these synaptic vesicles. Um, and they have the different neurotransmitters in it. And there'll be different neurotransmitters depending on the message, depending on the kind of neuron, um, those different things. And they will cross the synaptic gap and if the um, and the synaptic um, the the postsynaptic dendrite um, basically they're kind of like locks and different neurotransmitters are are different shapes um, in theory just like there's different shape locks so you have to have the key that matches that lock um, so only certain neurotransmitters will actually be taken up um, by the postsynaptic dendrite at the receptor sites. And again, um, depending on what is taken in uh, and how much, that will determine if it's an excitatory um, message, an inhibitory, an inhibitory message, or um, if there is no message necessarily received. As the brain develops, the majority of axons become myelinated. In this process, nearby glial cells literally reach out and wrap axons with adjacent segments of a fatty substance that functions as a sort of insulator for the axon membrane. Myelin disrupts the movement of the action potential along the cell membrane. This disruption forces the electrical signal to jump through the axon beneath the surface areas that are insulated by myelin. 
the electrical charge jumps to the next region on the axon that is not insulated by myelin. These regions are known as nodes of Ranvier. At each node, the electrical impulse can be recharged by a strong flow of electrically charged particles entering through the membrane. The strengthening electrical impulse then jumps to the next node where the process is repeated. Transmission of an electrical impulse is much more rapid, up to 10 times faster, in myelinated axons than in unmyelinated axons. So again, myelin is this insulating layer of fatty material. It's composed of these gill cells, um, and it really helps with that transmission um, of one signal to another, um, one signal from one neuron to another neuron. It really speeds up this transmission. So that ends our video on neurons.